Problem 14. Chloe and Zoe are both students in Miss D's math class. I'm not going to butcher the last name. Last night, they each solved half the problems in their homework assignment alone, and they solved the other half together. Chloe had the correct answer to only 80% of her questions she solved alone, but overall, 88% of her answers were correct. Zoe had correct answers to 90% of the questions she solved alone. What was Zoe's overall percentage of correct answers? A very good problem-solving strategy is to assume a whole when you're given um, percentages, because percentages, right, of a number can scale. The idea of scaling is, because the thing is, she solved, for example, like a number of questions, but 80% or how much is it? Uh, 88%. So 88% of A can be scaled up or down depending on multiplying by common uh, or multiplying whole numbers, right? So the idea here is 88% of 200, right, would give the same proportion as 88% of 100. The reason why? Because we just, this is equal to 0.88 times 100 times 2. We're just, we're just scaling it up by 2. But overall, right, that proportion stays the same because the proportion is multiplied by a scalar. But proportions multiplied by scalar numbers won't change the overall proportion. The numbers will change, but not the proportion. So we want to suppose the simplest whole number of this term right here to give. Well, obviously, 200 works, 100 would work, but 100 obviously is the easiest because we just shift the decimal places to right, two, two places to the right. So let's assume that when, she, when it said that Chloe had correct answers to only 80% of herself alone, but overall 80% of her answers were correct, let's assume that 100, right, is half of the entire thing. So 200 would be the total. Why did I assume this? Because 100 of half, she solved, what, 80% of the half the questions by herself, so this means she solved 80 total questions, because 80, 0.8 times 100. But overall, she had 88% of her answers correct. So overall, it's the 200 total. So what is 0.88 times 200? Well, that is 88 times 2, which is 176. So she solved one, or not, not her, 176 total correct, right? And 80 of the 176 total, or 80 of the of all the correct answers were done by herself, by herself then what must have the remaining 96 questions came from? The 96 questions must have come from working together, right? Because remember, they worked together for this, for this, for this thing. So it's, this is her and someone else, which is in this case, uh, Zoe, but someone else. But this is obviously representing Zoe, but it's fine. So by herself, plus the amount she got correct by herself and the other person would give us the total 176 based on what the question told us. So if 96, were the amount that she got correct, then by logic, Zoe must have also got this number correct. Because, remember, they work together. So their answers for each of the questions that they solved were the same. Therefore, 96 and 96 means that not only did Zoe get 96 correct, that must also mean that Chloe also got a 96 correct. So what was Zoe's overall percentage of correct answers? Well, she had 96 solved correctly with her and her buddy. But then we know that Zoe solved 90% of the problems by herself, so we must add 90 to get the total number that she got by the same logic of how we got the total that Chloe got. So this divided by the 200 total will give us our final answer, which is 186 over 200. Now, 86 and 200, um, we have to divide by 2. Um, or rather, what is this? This is just equal to what? This is equal to 186 over 100 times 1 over 2, right? So what is 186 divided by 2? Well, that's 93 over 100, so that must equal 93%, so that must equal answer choice C.